Welcome back to another video, everybody. Today, we're going to do an in-depth overview over the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 controls. So we're going to cover controls over yokes, over throttles, over joysticks, uh, pretty much everything. I'll probably do a little bit of pedals as well, but pedals are pretty self-explanatory. I'm also going to show you how to save your own custom schemes, so that way you can switch between airplanes and not have to switch every single type of control again. Um, I'll also show you how to save custom views, which is one of my favorite features in, uh, in flight simulation. Saving custom views is so easy, and it makes your life so much easier easier when you're trying to get those perfect views where you might not like the default ones where Microsoft comes with. So I know a lot of you guys might not have product yet. Availability is terrible. So if you guys already have some of this stuff, great. If you have other brand stuff, you can translate what I'm going to show you today to it. Um, it's going to be fairly easy. And then if not, then hopefully this video will help you and prepare you for when your hardware actually comes in. So let's go ahead and open up Microsoft Flight Simulator 20 and we'll start with the yoke. So if you guys have a honeycomb yoke, as you know, these buttons over here will be automatically assigned. So your master switches, all your landing lights that are here, and your starter switch will automatically come assigned. Um, usually the hat switch comes assigned to do this, but in this simulator it does not. It, yeah, I think it has like snap views, so if you hit the left one it just snaps you completely uh, 90 degrees or something like that. So you have to go in manually and switch these. I'll show you exactly how to do that. Um, it was pretty annoying. They should have had that defaulted, but but you can still do it it just takes some some time because you have to uh set like eight different buttons for every single direction so so that's what my hat switch my hat switch does uh right here this is gonna be my trim so you can see the trim wheel down there spinning up and down uh trim is your best friend make sure you have something very easy to change your trim so it makes your flying experience that much better um, next to it is going to be my zoom in and zoom out so that's that two buttons next to each other uh, there's going to be a button right here behind it. You can't really see it, but there's a little white button, and that's what I use to turn on my mic whenever I'm using VATSIM. So whenever I'm using real ATC, I'll turn that to trigger my microphone on and off. Um, this right, this white button right here is going to take you to your saved view location. So that's what I was talking about with saving views. Um, you need to have two things set up to be able to do that. So you need to have one button assigned to something called save custom view. And then you need to have another button saved for go to custom view. So my save custom view button is on my, my throttle. It's the last button on it. It's going to be the T6 if you're familiar with the SciTech throttle. So what you're going to do, let me show you how to do that. Let's say you want to save this cockpit view right here. So what you would do is you would click the, the button that I assigned to save location. So I tapped it. And now we can look around anywhere. And if I hit the button it'll take us right to that view that we just saved. So we can be here. Sometimes it'll do this, it'll take you to the last view as well, but you hit it twice and it works every single time. So just a little glitchy, you can look down here, and then you hit it again, and there's that view that we had saved. Um, I might be doing something wrong, I don't know why it goes to a different view first, and then it goes to it, but it works, you just hit it twice, and um, like let's say you wanna save a view looking out to your left, so I just save that. And then let's look here. It's still snapping there, but watch. Second part. Yep. Second try always takes you to your safe cockpit location. So whenever we get into the control settings, I'll show you guys how to assign those and what they look like. Um, next up on the honeycomb is going to be these two buttons right here. So the bottom one to the left will trigger my ATC on and off. Um, the one on the left is going to do up and down for my view. That way I don't have to keep reaching over the keyboard if I have to make small adjustments for landing or if I'm looking for something in the ground. So there's that. Um, red button is going to be my autopilot uh, engage and disengage. And then this white button is going to be my look outside view. So that's pretty much it for the honeycomb. Um, so if you have the side tech, you don't have to worry about all these because, I mean, you wouldn't anyways because they're already automatically assigned. So the ones I really recommend would be your trim, your trim up and down, that's a huge lifesaver. Uh, probably some sort of zoom in feature. Most are gonna have your hat switch, whether you're on a joystick or a yoke, so you should have that button. And then another button I would recommend would be something for your view and your autopilot on and off button. So that's pretty much how it would be in a real plane. Most planes will have your autopilot and also your mic here. So those are the ones that I think are most important. Um, and then let's move over into the throttle quadrant. So for the throttle, this is something that I have two different um, schemes saved for. So I have one for airplanes with speed brakes, and then I have one with airplanes for mixture. So every time I'm flying something like a Cessna, I have it saved to default where this will be your mixture, uh, this will be your flaps, 
and this will be your your throttle. And then whenever you want to fly something that has speed brakes or something, you can also save a default, which would make this one uh, your speed brakes instead of your mixture. And I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, button wise, I don't have much set up. I don't use that many buttons in here, but uh, these are going to be my gear up and down buttons, my T3 and my T4. Uh, my T6 is that button I showed you that will save your favorite view, your custom view. Uh, T5 I don't have set as anything, and then T2 I have set as my parking brake on and off. That's another important one since the plane almost always starts with your parking brake on. So that just makes it nice and easy and uh, convenient. And then T1, I don't have anything set there as well. So I'll add stuff, but right now I'm just going over the ones that I think are the most basic and the ones that I think everybody should put in their hardware. So flaps, mixture, throttle, uh, gear up and gear down, you know, zoom in, zoom out, hat switch, all that stuff is stuff that's pretty much default I've used in every single flight simulator for the last 15 years. So I've almost never changed the setup right here. So hope you guys find it find it useful and another thing here on the throttle is going to be these switches here if you have the uh, throttle quadrant from SciTech you know that there's this kind of like a clicking button right here past the zero mark so for throttle I set that as my reverse thruster for planes that are capable of that so you would just hear that would trigger your reverse thrusters and then you would just power up to get that going so that's pretty much it guys so you have four uh, Cessnas and stuff with mixture you have your mixture you have your flaps you have your throttle and then gear up, gear down, uh, parking brake, and also uh, save camera view. So that's pretty much all I got right there. Reverse thrust right here. And then for joystick, I have a very, very simple joystick. So this is, this is the one I have. And it's gonna be the same thing. You're just gonna assign your hat switch to your view. Um, the trigger for me is always my brakes. And then these I assign one to ATC maybe, or um, default views for sure, especially when bush flying. And then of course, sometimes you have a little throttle. So if you guys have a sophisticated joystick that's got a lot more buttons, just translate some, some of these inputs that I put into my yoke or my throttle quadrant and assign those to your yoke. And that goes the same thing for any other hardware you have, such as uh, an Xbox controller, or gamepad, or even um, different brands of yokes. This is all stuff that can be translated directly. So those are my inputs. Let me go ahead and open up the control settings so I can show you guys how to tweak everything in there. So here we are in the settings page. Um, as you can see on the top side, it's going to tell you everything that you have plugged in. Unfortunately, right now, the Cytex switch panel and the ATC panel or the radio panel is not working, so it doesn't show up on here. Um, but for the most part, they will. Some of them will actually show you a picture. Uh, my basic joystick does not but the side tech throttle quadrant does and the alpha flight control does along with the buttons so the layout of this is a little weird I feel like they could have definitely done better um, I know I definitely like the layout of the x-plane one better if you want to search for something like safe cockpit view there it is or safe custom camera these are the ones that I showed you they don't have anything assigned because this is my my yoke the one that I have saved is under my throttle so as you can see you have up to nine options to um, save custom camera so I'm sure you're gonna have nine options to load custom cameras as you can see there they are and there's my load custom camera which is that button right there so that'll take you to it you can have up to nine different ones so if you have a ton of buttons or if you want to use your throttle quadrant for um, all your t6s you know that's six buttons right there that you can just use for views if you want to you want to do that if you just love custom views or for cinematic and stuff like that it would be a good idea just because it gets you there so quick without you having to adjust your camera that's the search by name feature uh, the search by input feature is just you're just gonna click whatever button on your controls that you want to see what it's assigned to um, there it is if it's not assigned to anything it'll just be blank let me see if I have anything empty not that one so for example yeah button 12 is blank so there's nothing there so we could assign that one. If we wanted to assign it to something, we can go to, let's go to essentials and see what they have in there. So toggle anti-ice, I could do that. Um, let me just do that just to show you. So you would click in here, you click start scanning, or you can even do it from the drop down menu. This is gonna help you guys out with the hat switch feature because in the hat switch, it's really hard to hit those like up right buttons, which are like in between your right and your top buttons. So in here, you'll be able to um, pick them individually right here. So you just match this POV left, up left, down left with the um, 
with the down left inputs on this page and you'll be all set. Um, I did do that. It is a little easier because every time I do, to do I try to do top right on the hat switch, I would just end up clicking up or just clicking right. So if you guys have issues with that, just do the drop down menu and click them individually. I'm not going to do that because this one's an easy click. So there it is, button 12, validate. So now it is set and then I could set it to another input if I wanted to. That's what that second section is. So that's the search by input. And then you can do select an input, same thing, drop down menu if you um, if you have trouble hitting that button correctly, like the up lefts are hard to click. So there it is. Oh, not essentials, but assigned. See, up left has something assigned, but it's not showing up. But that's just a glitch. Yeah, there's up left. So just a little glitchy here and there. Uh, I know that they did just release a new update. I just downloaded it. It was 15 gigs. I'm going to see exactly what they did. And um, if it's good enough or if there's a lot to cover on it, I'll probably do an overview video. Uh, so far, I haven't noticed anything new. All the little bugs that I had before are still happening. To save the... The different schemes. So as you can see right here, it says planes with mixture, and I can switch it to planes with spoilers. So if you see here, my spoiler axis is set to uh, the middle lever, and then if I switch it to with mixture, it'll switch it to my mixture. So right there and, and there, every time you have to uh, switch between a Cessna and a jet, this is where you would go, and you would just switch that over real easy and save it. Um, I don't have anything on my yoke that I would have to switch between. It's really just the mixture and spoilers is the only thing that I change in there. So um, if you guys want to see how to save that, um, usually it would be under default. So default, you can still change it. You just go to preset manager. And then what I do is I duplicate it because I like everything else in it. So I duplicate it. Um, we'll just make this uh, test say okay so now you have a copy of default but test so now you can go in here and change any button you want very easy I do like that feature so this is what you're gonna do to set your hat switch to look like mine where you just have uh, full motion uh, let me show you we'll do search by name and then we'll just put in cockpit and these are only gonna show so right now the filter is set to assigned so when assigned it's only gonna show you stuff that's actually already on your yoke so if you click all it's going to show you every single type of input you could assign, the ones that are and the ones that aren't. So these are all the ones that you're going to have to go to individually. Uh, cockpit look down, cockpit left, right. So th it was kind of a hassle, but at least it's just a one-time fix. Well, one time per per piece of hardware. I had to do it separately for my yoke as well. but Or not my yoke, but my joystick as well. So, But this is how you would do it. So you would go in, you would erase all the ones that it was set to. So before, I forgot exactly what it was, but I know they were all together, and then you just click it. Uh, you click clear current input, and you click validate, and that'll erase the input. Um, unfortunately, if you don't erase it, it's just gonna double stack it. That's a little annoying. Another thing that I think I explained did a little better, but still, once you get it going and you get past that part, you're, you're set to go. That's pretty much it. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, if you like the video, make sure to like. Uh, subscribe. I'm going to be doing a ton more of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 videos nonstop. Uh, tomorrow we'll have uh, part three of the best freeware scenery. So just make sure you turn your uh, bell notifications on for that one because that's one of my most popular videos is the freeware scenery. And it's something that they add every single week and I just looked at all the new ones. So um, there's some pretty awesome stuff that I'm going to show you guys tomorrow. So yeah, just make sure to subscribe. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video. And like I said, if you guys have any questions about any of this, just comment down below and I will try to get to you. Um, and if not, somebody else might. I know the community has been really good about responding to other people's comments and helping each other out, which is awesome. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that video and I will catch you in the next one.